Today is in Holland a Nationale Gedichtendag, National Poetry Day. So we thought we could um, we, we thought we could give you a very uh, special bonus tonight. And uh, I, I I talked to Victor and said, Do you have any of the poems still that your mother wrote? Could could you maybe read out loud a poem that your mother wrote? And he said, Well, no, I don't think I have that. But I have the poems that Rilke wrote for her, or so to say, sent her. So um, I see a very old booklet here, and maybe you can explain what that is, and what you have um, found in the archives or in this little booklet that you want to read us and why. Well, you know, we all know that Rilke had many friendships with young women, <laughs> um, and my mother was one of those. <laughs> and because she wrote her poems herself, and she wrote a very big, um, very long poem um, about Michelangelo, which is, um, uh, she sent to Rilke, and they started a correspondence. And he sent her uh, his own poems uh, by way of a response. And I have here uh, a first edition of the Zonette on Orpheus. Um, but he actually sent manuscripts, but this is my, her, it's got her name in the front. Uh, Elizabeth de Fossé, number 33, it was a very early, uh, early edition, first edition. And uh, of the poems that he sent her, the three were from the Zonette. So, shall I read one, one or two of them? Uh, I, I would love you to read them, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I also want to give the audience the possibility to ask questions but maybe we should do the reading first. Well, I'll, I'll just read one of them. Um, I've got three I've chosen, but which are favorites of mine because I was grew, grew up with them. Um, if I can find them. Um, let's see. This is one of my favorite poems because she had it always with her. Wandelt sich auch die Welt wie Wolken gestalten, alles vollendet die Feld heim zum Uralten. Über dem Wandel und Gang weiter und freier wird noch dein Vorgesang, Gott, mit der Leier. Nicht sind die Leiden erkannt, nicht ist die Liebe gelernt, und was im Tod uns entfernt, ist nicht entschleiert. Einzig das Lied über dem Land, heilig und feiert. It's a wonderful poem. Is it also a poem that she loved? She, well, she loved it and she always yeah. had it by and she taught it to me when I was a small boy. Do you I, have, I do you, do you have any idea why? Hmm? Why should it be? Is this one of her favorites? One of the favorites. Well, it's one of the he sent her, you see. Yeah. Um, so she had the feeling it might have been written for me. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you, you will all know Rilke's sonata, and they are real treasures, aren't they? Mm -hmm. As well as his. Um, I've got two more here. Yeah, please do. We're, uh, we're, we're in, in the Austrian embassy. We need some German here. <laughs> also, Deutsch can I speak sprechen, but I have a so far. Ich habe ja, kein Problem, aber jetzt ein bisschen Deutsch, bitte. Wir könnten ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen, wenn Sie wollen. Nee, ich meine nur mit, mit dem Griechen. <lacht> Gut. Er ist 1992 gestorben. Er hat ein ganzes Jahrhundert durchgelebt. Im Krieg, im ersten Krieg, Weltkrieg, waren die Familie, die Fussi-Familie dann in Bad Ischow. When she got her degree as a lawyer, um, she, it was very disappointing. It was just after the Kaiser had, had <laughs> Otherwise, uh, he, he would have had it from home. He would have had his ticket, because he was 
uh, uh, she, she was first. She was uh, summa cum laude, mm -hmm. and she would have had uh, she would have had it from him. Uh, but the, he was, as, as you know, uh, and, uh, from Edmund's book too. Uh, of course, the, the emperor, the Kaiser, was the great protector of the Jews. In uh, he, he was very. Um, glad of his Jewish loyal subjects. And in spite of the anti-Semitism, which was quite spread, widespread, the Jews very much depended on all the other. Interesting thing in the book is that uh, in the first part of the novel, um, Kuno Avner mentions uh, anti-Semitism in the States. Mm -hmm. And that that's the re one of the reasons that he wants to go back home. And um, I would like to come back actually to my initial question. Um, now that we've heard a lot of your mother's life, um, where is she in the book? Are we right? We had a reading group two weeks ago and we, uh, we discussed the book very thoroughly, like for over two hours. And we came to the conclusion that she's actually in several prote protagonists of the book. She's in Mr. Adler, she's in a way in Resi. Is she also in Kanakis in a way? This is for the yes, people who've read the book already, yes, actually. Uh, so maybe, maybe. I wonder, yes, yeah. I think so. I think a, a good novelist, I mean, as you all know, and uh, one of them, uh, I don't know if you should see it, uh, uh, <coughs> Nicholas Sanders, a novelist, um, um, has to enter into all the characters, and of course the characters reflect, True, yeah, absolutely. reflect the, um, uh, the the author. Um, my son's wife has just written a novel, which is just about to be published um, in all languages. I've just been reading it in German, and um, clearly it is, uh, her own experience is very much in that yeah. in that novel. Are there any questions for Mr. Laval? <coughs> Mr. Laval, um, thank you so much for, yeah. for, for everything that you told us tonight. Um, would you like to as a, as a, the mic? Uh, translator? I would be very much interested to um, know whether you as children were aware of the fact that your mother was writing these novels. Did, did she, did she speak them. about them? Did she mention them to you? Were you aware of what was in them? No, not really, because um, we were, what we were aware of was that she had her study upstairs in our little house, and she was always there writing <laughs> uh, all the time. And she wrote two novels in German and uh, three in English. Yeah. And, uh, uh, none of them, of course, were published at the time. But she did try this one. She did yeah. try this yeah. one yeah. in okay. particular. Oh, only this, yeah, this one. Yeah. But, but it was too close to the mm -hmm. events. Yeah. People were not in, didn't want to know, really. So she was disappointed about that. As she, as with that bit which we had, you read out for. Yeah. Um, I wonder what she would make now. Um, but. Uh, <coughs> Uh, but she was always writing. Yes, we were aware of that, but of course we didn't know what um, what she was writing at the time. She helped us, of course, in our own writing very much, um, uh, with our homework and uh, the essays and all that sort of thing. Um, she was very good at a teacher. Uh, <coughs> even when I was a very small boy living in Oberbotzen, she was teaching me French uh, with uh, the... Uh, the um, La Fontaine's, uh, teaching me La Fontaine's fables and so on. She was very widely <coughs> aware, of course. Any, Any other questions? Oh, excuse me. Have you read all of the novels that your mother wrote? No. Um, uh, I, <coughs> I read the German ones. A bit <coughs> um, the trouble is, uh, of course, we never thought they would be published in the end, you see. It was, uh, it's only because of Edmund knowing uh, Nicola and, uh, and so on that uh, suddenly this, this has been published. So the novel, she had a great correspondence. She was a philosopher, as you mentioned, 
habe ich über, und sie hatte diese größte Freundschaft mit äh, Eric Vögel. Ja. He has a great archive in, in, in America, in the, in the university. And, um, uh, and uh, not all, all her writings are no. there.